Solanda was accompanying Banks on this expedition and what's really interesting, particularly about the way that they um, catalogued the plant species they gathered when they were here, they were specialists in how they recorded the information. So there are acrylic paintings of what they gathered at that time. And they also gathered the species in the different life stages in terms of plant growth. And then some of the names that they recorded them on by way of impact still exist today. So Cordeline um, Banksy, we know as tea coca or cabbage tree. The Banksy in the name is named after him. There's also, um, I think it's uh, Sinesha Banksy. We know that as Kiki. And I think what's really fascinating is a lot of the um, species that they gathered when they were here, taking it from our whenua, still exist today. And so I think um, in terms of, we have lost a lot, uh, but we still have a lot of what they apparently captured at that time. And sometimes I think um, we do get quite caught up in everything that was taken that we uh, forget to think more about what we still have. And if you think about when they were here, this didn't exist, Awapuni existed, and so did Orongo. And so what you would have had in, in terms of natural landscape were three massive biodiversity hotspots just flourishing with plant species, marine life, birds, mammals. You know, we have still all of these what they call highly migratory species that fly all the way from Siberia and land on our back doorstep in Te Whiru Whiru. And a lot of that was why we were positioned around those spaces. And I think if one of the things that we can get through the research that carries on is um, more records like what Uncle Dean's been doing and researching what they catalogue because that will give us a much better understanding of the um, the footprint exists and then to stop referring to the Latin name. So he was here from the 8th, the afternoon of the 8th to the 11th. So at 6 o'clock in the morning he set sail for Whareo, okay, south. And the whole reason for doing that was uh, he set sail for 31 degrees latitude, which was Cape Kidnappers, and it was all about longitude latitude. As Dean has said, Cook came here to observe the transit of Venus. When he was in Tahiti, he was given secret instructions to find Terras, Terra Australis, which was the lost southern continent that they had heard about from navigators and uh, conversations that Kope had taken back into the Pacific. So they were sent here um, to find these lands. And he left here on the 11th, and on the way out, they named Nick's Head, Young Nick's Head, on the way out. So Young Nick's Head wasn't named or wasn't the area spotted when they came here. They wouldn't have spotted because they were too far out. What probably would have been the Ruahene Ranges at that particular time, but they named Young Nick's Head, Young Nick's Head, on the way out of here. Uh, the naming of Poverty Bay, I didn't get my way. It really should have been, I didn't get my way, Bay. I think that's that's really what it was, is that Cook didn't get his way here. And you could see that in all his actions. So, yeah, we, we might want to get a change to reflect future embitterment, Bay. You know, because Cook mentioned, oh, you know, I hope this does not embitter future reflection, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's got to be the dumbest name I've ever seen. They traded a number of Tonga down at Whareon. Um, and collected a number of paddles, up to 16, we believe. And it brings into the, the next uh, conversation around uh, these Tonga are still around. They're in places like the British Museum, the Cambridge University Mu Museum, and other places in London. So these tong Tonga still exist. About nine of them on the endeavour that had records, and some of them don't, they don't correspond with each other. Parkinson has a totally different record from Cook. Parkinson said, oh, no, he names all the killers on, on the thing, which is quite a hard case. So he's actually knocking on Cook and, oh, no, Cook and Ding Bang sh shot them. There's a lot of people around here that are angry, and I don't blame them. Um, but, you know, it's all right to be angry as long as you know what you're angry about. You know, some people are just angry for the sake of being angry, you know, and it doesn't make sense. So hence the reason why we wanted to do this this morning so that we're educating our people. Uh, kia ora whanau. Um, so we're going to get into full groups and get into doing some planting. Those who are able to get down and plant, those who aren't, 
can sit back and supervise us to make sure we're doing the right job. All the fertilizers have been put into the holes and the rain crystals. The fertilizer is the clay because the soil here is not of good quality. So we want to give those plants a kai. The rain crystals are to keep the roots of the plants moist because it gets dry here. We don't have irrigation um, and those sorts of things. If you come across a plant like this manuka, and you can see that the roots are wrapped around it. Okay.